Well, we continue in our series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we come to a statement that gets, gets so radical compared to what people were actually living, and so contrary to what the religious rulers were teaching, Jesus was definitely upsetting the apple cart. We saw in the last passage of Scripture that we looked at what real response was meant to be, how we were to treat other people, and how to treat your enemies, treat those who come against you. And it was radical Christianity, friends, and it is radical Christianity. And we need uh, to think about that in our responses to people and make sure that we don't find ourselves in a place of bitterness. Matthew 5.38 says, you've heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is the passage we looked at in our last devotion. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If he wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. And we looked at what real response was, and it was a response uh, like this, which is so different than the way of the world, different than any way that we would consider to respond to someone in these kinds of situations. But Matthew 5.43 begins to bring all of that into context and to carry this a little bit further. And so it says this, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. See, Jesus was leading up to this. He was leading up to what was underneath and why we would respond in such a gracious way from Matthew 5, 38 to 42. Why we would um, not do an eye for an eye. Why we would not, uh, why we would offer the other cheek. Why we would give when someone wanted to take. Why would we go the extra mile? Well, it's because of this. It's because of love. Love is the heartbeat of Christianity. Love is the center of Christianity. And if you don't have love, you have nothing. You can be a stickler for every point that's in, in the Word of God and be a loveless person. And if you don't have love, then somewhere you've missed real Christianity. Now, real Christianity and real love go together. Um, and this is what the topic is today. It's called real love. Yesterday, or the last devotion, we looked at real response but the motivation for real response is real love. And that real love, Romans chapter 5 tells us, has been poured out on us by the Spirit that he has given to us. You know, the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is the first one in the list is love. It's love. And so... When we read this passage in Matthew 5, 43, Jesus says, you've heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, the passage in the Old Testament says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But sadly, it had been changed by these folks over the years, it was more justifiable to love your uh, who you considered to be your neighbor. Love the Lord your God. No, we have no problem with that. Yeah, we're supposed to love our Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So they said. So people say, oh, I love God. First John makes it very clear. That if you say you love God and you hate your brother, you don't. You cannot do one exclusive of the other. Both go together. This is what Christianity does. And how do we how do we determine this then? 
Because a person can say they love someone, they can say they love, but do they understand love? Because if I truly love God, then it is because of the work of the Holy Spirit within me. And if it's the work of the Holy Spirit, then I truly will love my neighbor as well. I will love. But it will be a real love. It will be a love that comes from God for his glory. So my encouragement to you is to understand the call of God. And this is why he gave us the Sermon on the Mount. It was so that we would understand the reality of God's call. And the, the call to love is not a small call. Because here's what it says. You've heard it was said, you'll love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Wow. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. Now, the, this, this is a tall order. As all of these have been... God is looking for real love. And he gives, he says, this is the reality, that you may be the sons of your father in heaven. Now that tells us a lot, because that says, if I am going to love my enemies, if I'm going to bless those who curse me, and do good to those that hate me, wow, I need a, 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 a supernatural love. This is not the love that the world carries. This is not the love that we see. It doesn't generate from humankind. It has to come. It has to come from God. And we need that love of God. Otherwise, we can't do this. Who can do this? It says, so that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. This is what he says. God is love. Scripture makes that clear. 1 John 4, 7 and 8, God is love. That is his, his person, his character. He is a God of love. And if he is a God of love, and if I become one of his children, then I need to be a person of love. Now, when we consider that God loved us before, we were believers. While we were his enemies, listen to this, Romans 5, 6 says, For when we were still without strength, at the appropriate time, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, but perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. So it says, yeah, well, hardly will people die for somebody else. That's not the, the typical but maybe for a good man, someone would even dare to die. They would go that far because this person is good. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for us because we were worthy. He didn't die for us because we were good. He died for us because he loves us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And here's the kicker in Romans 5.10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. When we were enemies, Christ died for his enemies enemies. And that's you and me, friends. We didn't behave as the friends of God. We behave as the enemies of God. That's what sin is. Sin signifies we're in the wrong camp. Sin signifies that we're in a spiritual battle and we're on Satan's side instead of God's side. So Christ dies for his enemies. So when he teaches us that you're to love your enemies and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you, this is exactly the way Jesus lived. 
He loved his enemies. That is why he could cry from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is why he was full of mercy. That is why he turned the other cheek. This was because of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. This is what he gave his son to. To be tortured, literally. And yet he loved. He loved. And so he says that you may be the sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. God loves the world, and God loves everyone in it. And this is expressed here in that he's saying he doesn't just cause the rain to fall on the just people. No. The rain falls on both. Both receive the blessing from God. And that is his mercy and his love and his grace. And if he didn't, if he didn't love his enemies, if he didn't love those who were hateful and rebellious and, and etc., then no, no one would ever be saved because all of us have sinned and all of us have come short. And so love is not conditional. It is unconditional. It, he just loves because he is love. And God's call on you in your life is to just love. Why? Because this is what real love is. This is the way Christianity was meant to be. However, you will not find the depth of love that has been spoken of here in your own self. You will need to discover the love of God. You will need to enter into a love relationship with God so that you can truly love your neighbor as yourself. But sadly, what Jesus says here, they had looked at this command of love to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then look at love your neighbor as yourself. They found that one a little too hard. So what they went to, what the legalists did, is they took the word neighbor and they defined it. They said, it's okay. Of course, we should love our neighbors. But anybody that's not my neighbor... I don't need to love them. And so what happened was great walls had come up, as they do. Walls had come up between Jew and Gentile. God never told them to hate the Gentiles. God never told the Jews, you, you must hate the Gentiles. No, of course not. Some of the practices, of course they were to hate. And you have... Uh, judgments that came upon them because of those practices and that was the judgment of Almighty God. But you have God sending Jonah, for example, to a Gentile city of Nineveh and to go there and how he was concerned for, for the entire city and the people that were in it and calls Jonah to go and tell them to repent. Jonah was reluctant to do it. But when he finally was forced to do it and they repented, Jonah was angry. He wanted to see them blasted. That's not love. So my friends, I want to challenge you to real love. And I want to offer you the source of it. Because if I just challenge you to real love and you didn't know the source of it, it wouldn't help you. It would make you ashamed, maybe, maybe. Or you would seek some way to justify yourself. You see, that's what happened when it says in Luke 10, 25, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus saying, teacher, what shall we do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What's your reading of it? He answered and said, you'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That's what was written in the law. 
And Jesus said, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But then here's what the man said. But he wanting to justify himself. Did you get that? He wanted to justify himself. And who is my neighbor? He wanted to justify himself that I don't have to love everybody here. I just have to love someone whom I call my neighbor. And then I'm fulfilling the legal requirements of the law. Do you see where he was going? And sadly, my friends, this is what had happened. I said already, the Gentiles, oh, we don't have to love them. They're our enemies. Oh, we don't have to love people who aren't walking right. They're not my neighbor. And because they're not walking right, they're living in sin. I don't have to love them. So they become my enemy. So the Pharisee looks at the publican, the tax collector, the, the thief, with utter disdain, as we see when two men went into the temple to pray. The Pharisee says, I thank God I'm not as other men are. Like this publican. So Jesus addresses the issue and he wants them to understand your neighbor is anyone. It's anyone. There is no room for hatred. There is no room for segregation. Do this and you will live. So Jesus gave us the story of the Good Samaritan. And for many people, they don't understand that when Jesus said this, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. They stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, and left him half dead. A certain priest came down the road when he saw me pass by on the other side. Didn't want to touch him. This was very direct, you see, because he was speaking to the priests, the Levites, the the holy man. And so he says, and likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. He gives the illustration here. He wants them to understand that, listen, just because you're a religious ruler, just because you have religion doesn't mean you have love. Doesn't mean that you're fulfilling the command to love your neighbor. Because these two passed by. There was no love there. But then he says, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And let me tell you, their ears would have perked. The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. They considered them half-breeds because they had intermarried with Gentiles in centuries past, and they had a hatred for Samaritans. And when he says a certain Samaritan comes along, What's he talking about? Why is he speaking of a Samaritan? He came and he saw the person that was in the ditch and he, it says he went to him and had compassion and he bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine and set him in his own animal and brought him into an inn to take care of him. And the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, said, take care of him. Whatever more you spend when I come, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? Now listen, this is a Samaritan helping out a Jew. And this would be shocking. Have you built walls? Are there people that you don't like? That you despise? That you would never be caught dead with? Have you built walls that are opposite to love? Here's what Jesus said in our passage in my Matthew 5, 46. If you love those who love you, what reward have you? Don't even tax collectors do the same. What does that mean? And if you greet your brother only, what do you more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so? He said, do you think 
because you have your own little band and you really do love these people. But the reason why is because they love you back. You see, if I only care for people because they care for me, that's a selfish motive. That isn't the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. Now, that doesn't mean it's wrong to love those who care for you. Of course it is, right. But do you have any love left? Do you have love left for people who hate you? Well, you say, well, I only have so much, you know. And that's true. That's the problem. We don't have enough. We don't have the capacity to love in the way Jesus calls you to love. So listen, if you think your Christianity is to strive to do these things, you come desperately short. To actually feel deep, passionate love for someone who attacks you. I think the last devotion I mentioned to you, when people attack me, I, I see the chains. I see the bondage that they're in. And God gives me a love for them, a love for my enemy. And that is not, shall we say, normal. But it is normal Christianity. I think that all of us have probably lived a very subnormal Christian life. And I want to challenge you today to understand the way of God is the way of, of such surrender, such surrender to the control of the Holy Spirit in your life, that you love your enemies, that you do good to those who do evil to you, to those who hate you, spitefully use you, persecute you, that you don't just love your clique, your group. Everybody does that. But our love must go deeper than this. And sometimes, sadly, Christians have gone into their holy huddle. And when Jesus says, love not the world, we stop loving people. When what Jesus is saying, don't love the world system, but he certainly challenges us to love people. Love them so much that we go out and we give our lives for them. Love them so much that we're looking for ways to serve them. Love the lost. Love the people in the gutter. Love the people on the, in, the, in the highfalutin places too. Sometimes a lot of disdain and hatred can go towards those who are rich and wealthy and those who are evil in their conduct. We don't want to love evil people. No, they're bad. <laughs> If we could only see how evil we all have been and are in ourselves in the, in the face of Almighty God, we would understand that we're the evil people that have been loved by God and we need to love the so-called evil people as well. Friends, this is radical Christianity again. This is God challenging us to real love. And this is what how it expresses itself. If you find yourself, oh yeah, I got no problem loving my group. The people I hang with. But I have a problem with these people, that person, these people, this person. Then you need to do a reality check. And find out whether you're really a Christian. And if you are, then you need to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And friends, we have the words from Romans that I read a little earlier. Beautiful words. That Christ loved us. He demonstrated his love for us. And that while we were sinners, while we were his enemies, he died for us. That's love. We have that tremendous statement there. And the reality that God so loved us that he gave his son. We have the expression of love. And we can respond to that love. We can say yes to the Lord. 
And when we do, the Spirit of God comes in and it changes, He changes our whole conduct, our way of life. He changes what we do. He changes what we are. And we begin to actually love people. We begin to respond in such a way that we care for people and we love people. It's so incredible, friends. It's so amazing to discover this love of God, this kind of behavior, so that we are like Jesus Christ, who when is reviled, he didn't revile back. But instead he committed himself to him who judges rightly. He didn't, um, he didn't give himself over to hatred for the ones that persecuted him and came against him. Instead, he loved them. A dying thief turns to him. He loved him. But he loved both of them. Here's what it says. In uh, Second, First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh and made alive by the Spirit. This is what he did. He loved. And he did it in such a way that God calls you and me to love the same way. He calls us to be the ones that are willing to love others in the same way. If he, the just, would love and do what he did for the unjust, you, the unjust, should be quick to love others. We're the unjust ones. They're the ones that Christ died for. So this is real love. This is real love. And I want you to know it. Come to Jesus Christ, my friends. And maybe your Christianity has been a sham. Maybe you're still full of hate, bitterness, resentments. And you need to come to Jesus Christ and repent and put your faith and trust in him and discover the love of God being poured into your heart, but being poured out of your life to everyone around you. Real love. It comes from Jesus Christ and only from him. Father, I pray you would open our eyes and show us, Lord, if we've got our own segregations, if we've got people, Lord, on a, on a list that we do not love, that we would not be willing to give our lives for because they're not worthy. That, Lord, you will show us and reveal to us the lack of love that we have so that we might love our enemies and do good to those who persecute us. Oh, show us the way of love, Lord. Let it be rich and deep and the river of life that you promised from your spirit. Let it come from us in true reality. Oh, let the world see real Christianity at work, Lord. Forgive us for our haughtiness, our pride, and our prejudices. In Jesus' name, amen. This song is called More Love, More Power. And we need more love and more power. Not the kind of power, ooh, ooh, ooh I'm so powerful. But the power to love, the power to forgive power to do the very things that we said that is so powerful friends and all of this is found in the lord jesus christ it's the only place where it is that's why it says more love more power more of you in my life has to be the lord come to him oh he'll fill you he'll fill you with a great love causes you to love your enemies More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, 
more of you in my life and I will worship you with all of my heart and I will worship you with all of my mind and I will worship you with all of my strength for you are my Lord This way. Receive the love of God. Be filled with the love of God. And then love with the love of God. Amen.